Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll start with Ansel's fluent. Uh, that is, we'll be analyzing this nozzle and what will be the pressure changes, temperature, and the velocity when it moves from one side from this side to this side. This side will be the inlet and this side will be the outlet. And I already created this simple nozzle, although this is not uh, exactly the same way how practically the nozzles are there. But I made this simple nozzle and uh, just we will see and I made it in CATIA and I have already exported to the standard format and so that I can import it in ANSYS. You can also model the same nozzle in ANSYS also but I am going to import it over here. So I will go here and I will go to fluid flow fluent and I am going to drag it on the project schematic. And I just, uh, geometry, I've already made it. Uh, so this is the CATIA file. So I'll just close it and I'll just right click on it and import the geometry and click on browse. And navigate to the location where you have saved the, uh, that part file. So I'll just click on it, the nozzle and then OK. And now the next thing is we need to mesh it. So I'll just double click on it. And now it has been imported. So I'll just first use the method and just I'll select this model in the geometry selection and then click on apply. And I'm going to insert another inflation and I'm going to select this boundaries that is the geometry and I'm going to select this inlet as well as the outlet. And in the software, uh, the X direction is in negative because in CATI I modeled it properly but here the orientation is different. It goes from this side to this side. You can see Yeah, you can see that it is in the opposite x direction and we can just have uh, we, that is that will not be a problem we can have the graphs opposite also later in the post processing i'll show you how and i'll just create a name selection i'll just right click over here this is going to be a inlet so i'll just add it as inlet and this is going to be our outlet Yeah, and now we'll just right click. On, uh, we'll just click on the mesh, and I'm going to choose the element size as 10. And I'll go to the size and sizing over here, and I'm going to use the adaptive meshing. And I'll just right click and then generate mesh. And you can see it has been meshed and I just update it. And here it should you should see a message called the mesh. The mesh translation to the flame was successful. Only then you can go with the further steps, otherwise, you cannot go. So I'll just close this now. And now I'll use the setup. I'll enable the double precision and I'll use the number of process as 4 and then click on start. And now here you can check the mesh. Yes, and you can you can also check the mesh quality also. 
and here in the solver type i'm going to use the density type and the it will be a steady flow and i'm not going to enable the gravity because uh, we are not going to use the gravity over here and i'm going to double click on the models and i'm going to turn on the energy equation since we are going to solve the energy equations over here in the fluid flow and now i'll go to the viscous and I will use this first one because uh, I'm going to use the air which is incompressible. So, and then click on OK. And now, we'll, by default, when you open the answer student, there will be two materials defined. One is the fluid, that is A will be defined, and the solid aluminum is defined. Here, I'm not going to use any of the solids, so we are going to use only the air. I just uh, review the properties of the air, that's it. You can add your own material uh, from here. You go to the data mix. Here you are having many number of fluids, uh, fluid that is, and solids also are having these many. You can add it if you want. Right now, I'm not going to add any of this. And for the density, I'm going to use as ideal gas and then change or create. So I have applied it properly now and I will go to the cell zone conditions. And I will make sure the material is fluid and then click on apply. And now I will go to the boundary conditions and I am going to have the inlet. I am not going to give the velocity, I am going to add the pressure. And now I will add the inlet pressure, total pressure of say 6.1, 6.2 into e to the power 5. And then click on OK. And at the outlet, I will change it to pressure outlet. And the gauge pressure is zero. We'll just click on it, apply. This is the walls and the interior it will be taken by default. You don't need to change any of the properties. And now I uh, will go to the initialization. I'll use the standard initialization and I'll just compute from the inlet zone. And I'll just initialize it. And we will go to the run calculation. Before going to run calculation, I one more thing will do. And here in the monitors, open residuals. And here I am going to add 1 e power minus 6. The more smaller the value, the more accurate will be the answer. That is the solution. So I will just click on OK. And now I will go to the run calculations and I am going to give the number of iterations as 500. You can go for higher values uh, until it converges you can uh, go uh, but it's going to take a lot of time so I am going to add 500 and then click on calculate. I am going to fast forward this because it is going to take some time it depends upon your computational resources. And now the calculation is complete. I'll click on OK and now we'll go to the post processing. I'll close this window. And now we'll go to the results. And you can see the nozzle body over here. 
but i'll just disable it and i'll just create a mid plane in the xy so i'll go to location over here and i'll cre create a plane i'll name the plane as plane 1 and i'm going to create on the xy plane and you can see the plane has been created i'll just go to the normal view of it and apply and now i'll just create a contour of it and now in the domain sorry and at, at the uh, location i'll just at the plane one and now we'll uh, see the pressure and now you can see the pressure is very high at the inlet at low at the outlet it is very low i'm going to increase the number of contours and then click on apply and now here you can see see suppose i'll just apply 100 yeah you can see and now i'll add one more contour and I'll just keep this contour as it is. So now I am going to add the temperatures. So I'll add the number of contours as 100 and then click on OK. And now you can see the pressure temperature also. Here at the inlet it is very high and at the outlet it is very low. You can see the highest value as 2.924 e to the power e02. That is 292.4 it is the highest and the lowest is 48.53 and similarly I am going to check for the velocity now and I am going to add the plane over here and I will just check for the velocity and I am going to uh, disable this all these two all this count so I just see now the velocity you can see here at the inlet velocity is very low at outlet the pressure the velocity is very high as the pressure decreases at the outlet the velocity also increases uh, at the counter two you can see the temperature now and now we'll have a streamline flow and I just disable this and uh, for those I just use the surface streamline and the surface will be the plane on only on this plane i'm going to analyze them. so i'll use the number of points as say 200 and i'll just here we are having only the velocity yeah i can see the velocity and now you can, you can have the option to animate also for that one first you need to create the streamline so i'll just see you can see the animation how the flow takes place here the velocity is low here at the outlet it is very high I just stop it and here you can vary the speed I just put the plane one and I'll just check on the plane how it will be there you can just see you can pause it and fast forward it or skip the slow uh, you can just have a look and now we'll see how to plot the graph here you'll be having the option called graph this option is called chart so I'll give the name as one for this one you can name it whatever you want uh, you cannot add the numbers so I'll just add it as A and in the data series I'm going to give the streamline and for the X uh, X coordinates I'm going to use the X value and for the Y I'm going to use the pressure and I'm going to invert this because uh, you can see in this 3D viewer the X is in negative direction so I'm going to uh, reverse it so and now I click on apply now you can see I have plotted the pressure versus the distance you can see that the pressure keeps on decreasing as the distance increases and I'll create and one more chart similarly I'm going to create another chart I'm going to name it as B now I'll add the velocity similarly same X I'm going to add the distance and Y I'm going to add the velocity and click on apply I'm, I forgot to invert the axis yeah and you can see that the velocity increases as it moves throughout the distance and I'm going to create and one more chart I'm going to give it as C and now I just add the temperature for this one
do this i'm going to add the temperature and i'm going to invert the x axis and then click on apply and you can see the temperature gradually decreases from the inlet to outlet and uh, we can have a report also just go to the report viewer over here I'll just refresh it over here and here you can see all the graph and here you can uh, very, uh, name the title over here given here here if you want you can change I'm going to add the distance versus the temperature and then click on apply and refresh it over here I can see now it has been updated and similarly you can do for the other things suppose say I'm going to go for the chart B and I'm going to I just copy this uh, and Y axis here it is velocity so I'll just add the velocity over here velocity I just click on apply and similarly for the A, I am going to add distance versus pressure. And I'll go to the report viewer and just I'll update, refresh it. And now you can you can also publish it as so that you can have a PDF file. Uh, and also you can do it and now that's it and you can see the properly how to analyze the flow in the ANSYS fluent and uh, the reports also you can know you can also export the report and you can just have a look at it by using the publish option and thank you for watching my video please do like and subscribe my channel for more videos like this and comment below for any suggestions thank you